Take a break from your busy schedule and join Harold Sala for Guidelines, a five-minute commentary on living. Is there any real hope for dads? Now, no father ever chose what century in which he would raise his kids. Some face that task in times of world conflict. Some live in bustling cities, and some, yes, it's true, raise them without the help of a wife. It's interesting to note that some of the dads you will read about in the Bible were good fathers, others far less than that. Some you read about were faithful to their wives, some grossly unfaithful. Some taught their offspring right from wrong. Others were never there for them. And the record shows that the sins of the fathers were embedded in the DNA that carried from generation to generation. Then God saw fit to break the cycle and a new generation caught the vision of what it means to be a dad and a dad who is there for his offspring. There is a text which challenges men to abandon their stupidity, stubbornness, and rebellion of their fathers and do right. Here it is. God said, Don't be like your ancestors and relatives who abandoned the Lord, the God of their ancestors, and became an object of derision, as you yourselves can see. Don't be stubborn as they were, but submit yourself to the Lord. Come to his temple, which he has set apart as holy forever. Worship the Lord your God, so that his fierce anger will turn away from you. Okay, we're living in the 21st century. We have a generation of men who have fathered babies who haven't always had great dads as examples. If you're one of them, and you really wonder what does a dad do to contribute to the parenting process, this series of commentaries is just for you. For a start, I'd like to proclaim that your presence, dad, in the home where your kids grow up, provides them with physical and emotional security. Just being there is important. Yes, even if you and your wife always don't agree, Your presence there contributes something to your children they will never have without you. The following are facts, not opinions. It's a fact that when a dad is present in a home, a youngster is less likely to drop out of school. He is also less likely to be involved in crime, violence, drugs, alcohol, or games. His grades are better, and he is less apt to fail in school. If you have a teenage daughter, she is 50% less likely to become pregnant out of wedlock. Those are facts. Irving Crystal says that almost two-thirds of rapists, three-quarters of adolescent murders, and the same percentage of long-term prison inmates are young males who grew up without fathers in the house. I doubt that many fathers, he said, have understood their mission in life has anything to do with the prevention of rape, murder, or long-term imprisonment among their sons, end quote. How does a dad do this? Every child has three emotional needs, and a good dad can go a long way in meeting those needs. What are they? Need number one, a measure of security. Number two, to help a child feel worthwhile to himself and to others. And need number three, to give and receive love. Notice, if you would, Dad, that the first mention of love in the Bible was that of a father's love for his son. The father, Abraham. The son, Isaac. No wonder God said, I have chosen him, Abraham, so he will direct his children after him. Remember, Dad, you are God's choice to do the same thing to your children. Yours is a mandate from heaven. You can make a difference, a big one. You've just heard Dr. Harold Sala with Guidelines, a five-minute commentary on living. If you would like to listen to the program again, download a copy, subscribe to our e-commentary, or view other resources, visit guidelines.org. We would like to hear from you, too. You can email us at info at guidelines.org. That's info at guidelines.org. Thanks for listening, and we invite you to join us again for the next edition of Guidelines. Guidelines.